Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. Just got my dog out in the backyard uh, for some exercise. It's pouring rain here in Ottawa. In this video, I'm going to talk all about a new paper that just came out yesterday, April 17th. And it's a crucial paper. It talks about the earth energy imbalance. And this parameter is essentially the difference between the energy coming into the whole Earth system at the top of the atmosphere, the TOA, if you like, um, versus the energy outgoing, leaving the Earth system. So obviously, if more energy is coming into the Earth system, which has been the case for many, many years with climate change, then the system, then, then what is going out, if more energy is coming in than is going out, you know, it's like the bathtub. It's like your tap is on faster than what the drain can um, remove. So the whole Earth system is warming and this paper quantifies all of the different aspects and it looks at where that heat is going. So I'm going to, you know, in the next video, I'll be in my office um, and I've got the paper, you know, it's open source and I'll go through the nitty gritty details. But right now I just want to summarize um, what's in there and i think you'd probably prefer to see my dog than um myself so he's there munching on a stick there newton good old newton so basically what this paper does is it's um and like i said it's a peer-reviewed scientific paper it's open source um there's 61 different authors from all around the globe that are on this paper um, I think Schuchman from France is the principal author. There was a similar paper, Newton, stop that. There was a similar paper um, published in 2020 and this paper that was just published that I'm talking about is um, the 2023 version, it's updated. So the title is Heat Stored in the Earth System from 1960 to 2020. Where does the energy go? Of course, the energy is distributed in the ocean, on the land, in the cryosphere, which is the frozen um, sphere, if you like, of the Earth, the atmosphere, okay, in those four regions, um, but it's also, in, also stored in the biosphere, um, when you think about it, right? But that's not, not one of the spheres mentioned in the paper. So they talked about the AR6, Assessment Report 6 from the IPCC, Working Group 1, the physical science basis where a lot of this information is kept. And we know that the um, warming is, 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 all, is human caused, it's from humans. So they did a heat inventory um, to come up with this parameter, the energy earth imbalance. So from 1961 to 2020, there was a 381 zeta joules added to the Earth's system. Now, one zeta joule is 10 to the 21st joules. It's a huge amount of energy. And if you take that energy and to, you can get a heating rate, um, basically on the surface of the Earth, because you know the surface of the Earth area, and the heating rate is 0.48 watts per square meter. So almost half a watt per square meter. That heat is distributed the following way. 89% of the heat goes into the oceans. 6% is on land. 4% of the heat is for melting the cryosphere, melting ice. And only 1% of the heat goes towards heating of the atmosphere. And that 1% is crucial because, you know, what that heating in the atmosphere is what we see for the most part, you know, living on the surface of the earth, right? It's the, it's the heating component that uh, supercharges the, the atmosphere and causes all the extreme weather events that, that we're seeing. Now, of that number, the earth energy imbalance has greatly accelerated even since 2006. So the data from 2006 
to 2020, that Earth energy imbalance is now 0.76 watts per meter squared. Right, I told you that the 50 year number from 1961 to 2020 was 0 0.48 watts per square meter, and now it's up to 0 0.76 watts per square meter just between 2006 and 2020. The distribution of the heating is similar to before, uh, but instead of the atmosphere being 1%, it's more like 2% now, and the, the, the land um, is more, more like 4% rather than 5%. Um, or, or, or it's, uh, the land is, sorry, 5% uh, rather than 6%. Okay, now, why is this important? Why is this so important? Well, the Earth energy imbalance is actually it's the most fundamental um, global climate indicator that we have really. It tells us if, how much, how fast, and where the earth is warming, as well as how the warming evolves in the future, will evolve in the future. So again, it's basically energy in minus energy out at the top of the atmosphere. And, or in other words, the, the net radiative flux at the top of the atmosphere. Now the data on all of this stuff is public and the paper is open source. So you can't, you know, you can access it yourself um, and uh, see what's going on. Now, in order to halt global warming, we need to zero the energy earth imbalance and actually even reduce it. Have more energy going out than coming in to cool. And it's a, ver it's a great measure of the rate of climate change. It needs to become part of the Paris Agreement global stock take taking. And uh, it's human driven, of course, and it results in unprecedented and uh, committed um, changes to the Earth system. Now, we, we know this number is accurate because it's established in two different ways, in two separate ways. The first way is we determine the Earth energy imbalance from the quantification of the Earth's heat inventory by actual measuring heat going into the different components of the Earth system. But we also get that number by direct measurements from space, from satellite. So we measure the energy in, which is the shortwave solar radiation, and we measure the energy out, both shortwave reflection, scattering from clouds, et cetera, et cetera, and long wave radiation or heat. And if you sum up all that, you get the energy out, you take the difference, energy in minus energy out and you get the energy earth imbalance. So the energy stored on the earth system is mostly in the form of heat. So 2020, the paper, uh, a similar paper, the, with the sort of the first uh, uh, global assessment of this from numerous authors um, was done and this was an update. Um, and like I said, it was published uh, April 17th, 2023, online, open source. The Earth radiative responses are complex to this incoming energy, right? There's a variety of feedback mechanisms like water vapor, clouds, ice albedo, permafrost heating, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and there's a very simple equation which relates the energy Earth imbalance to the radiative forcing and the temperature at the surface of the earth. So that equation is energy earth imbalance is equal to delta N at the top of the atmosphere. Okay, and that's the net energy imbalance at the top of the atmosphere. We measure that in watts per square meter. Newton, he doesn't seem to mind the rain. 
So that earth energy imbalance is equal to delta F uh, with subscript ERF. And that delta F is the effective radiative forcing in watts per square meter minus alpha FP, which is the net total feedback parameter times the delta TS, which is the global surface temperature anomaly in Kelvin. Now, these factors, unfortunately, are will stay positive for a long time because of the long lifetime of CO2 in the atmosphere. Okay, so that's basically the bottom line. You know, we talk about surf, surface temperature. We talk about, there's a lot of different metrics for climate change, you know, greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere, specifically CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, et cetera, et cetera, temperatures, melting ice caps, all this stuff. These are all within the Earth system. The most fundamental parameter is really the Earth energy imbalance, right? If there's more energy coming into the Earth system than there is leaving, we're having, then we have a warming. And we can calculate how much warming there is and uh, the rate of warming and the distribution of the warming into the different components of the atmosphere. I'll just repeat those numbers. Um, the, the key number is the warming was 0.48 watts per square meter. That's the average from 1961 to 2020. That number has accelerated, so the average between 2006 and 2020 is 0 0.76 watts per square meter instead of 0 0.48. That's a huge gain. And now, you know, in the most recent, uh, recent number average between 20, 2006 and 2020, 89 percent of the energy is heating the oceans. Like a squirrel, okay. 5% is heating the land, 4% is melting the cryosphere, and 2% is heating the atmosphere. And that number reflects a shift. The longer term 50 year number, 1% was heating the atmosphere and 6% was heating the land. Well, now um, that 6% on the land has dropped to five and the 1% in the atmosphere has gone up to two essentially. Okay, so these are the key um, findings of the, of the paper. And uh, like I say, the next video, I'll show you the paper, paper in detail and you can have a look at some of the, the numbers. Now I just got it, my dog is looking for squirrels. Hey, Newton. Oh, here he comes. Ready? I got a wet puppy. Ready? Go. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. What are you doing? Get a stick. Get a stick. Look, here's a stick. Go. When you have a stick, it's very tough to come to get him because he thinks you're coming to take it. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Give me a stick. Can I have it? Come on. Come on. Good boy. I'm gonna have to give you a bath. Okay, well, thank you for listening. Please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating to support my uh, work, my research and videos. Okay, bye for now.